Right, good. Thanks. Uh, so thanks, Avi, for inviting me, and thanks for showing up. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about polynomial factorization. Uh, I don't expect you to know uh, about stuff. I'm going to tell you about stuff. And most of the ideas that uh, will that I'll talk about here are going to be really simple and, uh, and, and elementary. So if there's something that you don't follow, not clear, stop me and ask. This joint work with Chining Chow. Chining is a first year grad student at Harvard, and Noam Solomon, uh, who's my office mate. Okay, so so the uh, the the basic question uh, which motivates this work is the following. Uh, so let's say we have a polynomial p. And p is nice. I'll formally say later what nice means. And the question is, so what can we say about the factors of p? OK, uh, to make this formal, let me start by defining arithmetic circuits. So an arithmetic circuit is a directed acyclic graph. Uh, it's like a Boolean circuit, uh, except we do arithmetic over the polynomial ring. Uh, yeah, this is the most complicated arithmetic circuit I can draw. Uh, and they give you natural, succinct ways of representing multivariate polynomials, which if you want to write them as sum of monomials, then uh, you'll have to write a lot of stuff. Now, if, if, if you like Boolean circuits, you could think of this as sort of the algebraic analogs of Boolean circuit. So one specific question uh, of that type would be, let's say p is a polynomial degree d and variables and has a small circuit. Uh, do factors of p have small circuit? What do you think? So. Right. Now, so, so the answer to this is surprisingly yes. Uh, so it's a theorem of Karl Tofen in the 80s. And what he showed was that, so, so if f divides p, then f as a circuit of size. So let's say small here means S. So it's poly in S, D, and N. Now, let's stop a minute and appreciate this result. So, so arithmetic circuits was the definition that I told you. For computer scientists, it's sort of a special case, special form of Boolean circuits. There's nothing about the definition which should tell you that uh, arithmetic circuits should somehow behave nicely with respect to factorization, which is a fundamental algebraic property. And Kartoff ensured that it's indeed true. Uh, so, so if you are uh, not convinced before the talk that arithmetic circuits are a natural thing to study, this result should really drill the point. Kartoff? Yes, I, I will. Yes, I will ask that in, in a moment. Uh, not only did Kartofen show this, he actually showed something more. He showed that there is a randomized polynomial time algorithm which so outputs a circuit for. Another way of saying this result is uh, 
is the following. So the complexity class VP is uniformly closed undertaking factors. Okay. Uh, now let's move on to Shai's question. So Shai asked, is the result of this type true for formulas? And it's a natural question to ask. So are other natural classes of polynomials closed under factoring? So for instance, are, fact, are formulas closed undertaking factors similarly you could ask the same question for small depth circuits and, or you could ask the same question for the complexity class v and p okay, so it's this closed undertaking factor So I'm not sure if there's a consensus on these things. Uh, do people believe that formulas are closed undertaking factors? Well, if you uh, if don't care about the distinction between polynomial and quasi-poly, quasi -poly, then, then yes. Then yes. yes. Then I, you know, I, I don't personally care very much. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, so it's, it's not clear uh, what people believe in the first two cases. For VNP, the, the story is a bit different. Uh, so let me first define VNP. This, this is the first time I'm ever defining VNP in a talk. Uh, so a family of polynomials, uh, let's say P sub n, is in VNP. If there's a family, let's say Q sub n, in VP, uh, such that So, so a family is in VNP. If there is another family in VP, such that you can write the polynomial here's polynomials here as exponential sums over the polynomials in the other family. So Q sub n here has a circuit which is of size polynomial in n, and it has degree which is polynomial in n. Okay, so. Uh, So Burgeser conjectured that VNP is closed undertaking factors. MCP. Ah, yes, I should say. So M is bounded by poly M. Okay. So VNP is closed undertaking factors. And this was a few years ago, 2001. Okay, uh, so so these are some instances of this question. Let me digress a little and talk about what I mean by applications. So in 2001, Kabanets and Impagliazzo they showed the following. So they showed that the super polynomial lower bound for arithmetic circuits implies a sub exponential time deterministic PIT yeah. so for arithmetic circuits and so this result is so this generalizes the Nissan Vigderson framework and one of the things it crucially uses uh, is Kaltofen's VP closure result Ah, yes. 
So let, let me define what PIT is. Yes. So you are given, uh, so you have to design an algorithm for the following problem. As an, your input will be an arithmetic circuit, and you'll have to decide if it computes the identically zero polynomial or not. Uh, it's easy to do in randomized polynomial time. You just pick a random point from a large enough grid, test if it's zero, and output accordingly. And the question is to de-randomize this. Uh, so come up with a deterministic algorithm uh, for this question. And so there are trivial ways of de-randomizing it. Uh, you do a brute force over a large enough grid, but that running time is, is exponential. Anything better than that is of interest. Anything marginally better than that would be interesting. Uh, so, okay, so I should say that Kabanets and Tempigliazzo proved more stuff, and this is one part of their paper, but this is, uh, this is the result I'm going to focus on. And one could ask similar questions for other complexity classes, like do, do low bounds for formulas, Imply PIT for formulas. Similarly, for low depth circuits. Okay, and this, these questions are of uh, are of interest for. First of all, they are natural questions. And, and the other reason is that our state of understanding for lower bounds is a little bit better than what we know for PIT. Uh, for, for instance, we know lower bounds for multilinear formulas. But we don't even know sub-exponential time deterministic PIT for depth 5 multilinear formulas. We know lower bounds for depth 4 circuits and depth 5 circuits over small fields. But we don't even know how to test uh, if a linear size depth 3 circuit computes the identically zero polynomial. So if you, right, so, so, and typically what happens is we, we get PITs for a class. Uh, we almost always know lower bounds against that class. So, so somehow the lower bound questions for restricted classes seems to be easier than the PIT question. And, and such a relation would possibly let us uh, design deterministic PIT algorithms for things which we don't know for the moment. Okay, and this problem was studied in this paper of Zev, Amir, and Amir. And, and they showed something uh, neat. So they showed that low bound for depth delta circuits implies PIT okay, for depth say delta minus 5 circuits. with bounded individual degrees. So when you mean PID, yes. how the running time uh, that you uh, Good. Uh, let me just say sub-exponential. But as your low bound gets better, uh, your running time improves. Uh, if this is truly exponential, you get quasi-poly lower bound. And I don't think we know how to get better than quasi-poly. In, in this connection. OK, uh, so what's bounded individual degree? The, you need the guarantee that your circuit computes a polynomial such that the degree of each of the variables is at most uh, something. OK, so we would really like to prove this theorem without uh, this condition. And one of the main ingredients of their proof was Yes, without the minus five. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So that would us immediately give us PIT for things which we don't know. Uh, one of the uh, one of the main technical ingredients of this proof was uh, a closure result. Uh, for factors of polynomials bounded individual degree. Okay. 
directory and load load episode. Nissan McDerson generator. Okay. Okay. You get the uh, like PRG. Like in real set, if you get a PRG from hard concept, the PRG can be used to de randomize the randomized output. That's the that's yeah. the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. So that's that's the idea. Is that good? Or? Yes. Okay. And also, what is the connection to to buffering? I mean, yes. you said it's central ingredient, but. Yeah, why does it show up? Uh, so may maybe we'll talk about this in, okay. in a little bit. Okay. But, but in, in one word, it, it, you have uh, this hybrid argument in the Boolean case. When you are, you are proving PRG, we relate the success of the PRG to the hardness of the function you are using in the interface PRG. This, this hybrid argument means it's sort yeah. of trivial in the, in the Boolean case. It's sort of fixed the value. In the arithmetic case, you have to do something which right. ends up being factor in your polynomial. Right, right. I, in fact, uh, so this paper of Kavanagh and Pagliazzo, there, there's a section saying why did this result show up 10 years after the Nissan Regression result, <laughs> and, and that's basically what they discuss. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, are, are we good? Yes. So the yeah. factor is kind of the, uh, the same. L uh, maybe. Yeah. The so my talk is not very long. So maybe I can digress and tell you more about it. Uh, the way it work, the way these algorithms work is the following. So let's say you have a circuit on n variables, and you want to test if the polynomial computed is identically zero or not. And the strategy is to reduce the number of variables to polylog n. So I'm going to come up with a new circuit on polylog n variables of degree being polynomially related to the degree here, such that if this is not identically 0, then the resulting circuit is also not identically 0. And once we have this transformation, then you have reduced the number of, va of variables to polylog n, so you do a brute force here. The way this works is uh, is to first construct an NW design. Uh, so you get subsets s1 up to s n. And at this point, on these set of variables, you apply your hard polynomial. Okay, and then you do the hybrid argument. And how, how does the hybrid argument work? Well, it says that, let's say, initially your circuit was non-zero, but after this whole operation, your circuit became zero. So there must be a point where you went from a non-zero to a zero. Uh, so let's say it happens at xi. Uh, so you, the moment you plugged in pi for xi, the polynomial became identically zero. This roughly means that pi is a root of the polynomial that you have gotten so far if you treat it as a univariate in xi. And so you relate pi, so pi is a root of something, a polynomial which has a small circuit, so pi must have a small circuit, and so on. Okay. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so these are basically the questions which sort of motivate this work. Uh, let me now state the results. Uh, so we prove an analog of that theorem. We don't quite get what we want. Uh, what we get is the following. So lower bounds. Or depth delta circuits for a, a polylog and degree polynomial implies sub exponential time deterministic PIT for maybe depth delta minus 5 seconds. So we do get rid of the individual degree assumption, but we, we have to 
strengthen our hypothesis. And yes, yes, yes. I I'll say a bit more later about how bad this this looks. In the in the degree, yes, uh, right, yes. Okay, uh, and and the the factoring result that we prove for this is, is the following. So let's set up some notation which will follow through the rest of the talk. So so p is a polynomial uh, in n variables. Uh, let's say degree r. And f is going to be the factor of p, so f divides p, and the degree of f is d. Okay, so and this, uh, the, the, the statement we get here is that if p has a depth delta circuit of size s, then f has a depth, say, O of delta circuit of size poly in S n r and sub exponential in D. So I can even write maybe delta plus uh, 6. This is not a polynomial bound in the parameters, but the super polynomial factors are confined to the degree of f. So if the degree of f is not too large, for instance, if it's log square n over log log n at most, then this bound ends up being polynomial. And, and that's why we have the low degree assumption here. OK. Uh, There are two easy and sort of interesting consequences of our proof. So one is that VNP is indeed closed under taking factors. So this confirms Burgesser's conjecture. And uh, the, the fourth one is a, is a result about formulas. So in that notation, if P has a size S formula, then F has a size poly in S and R D to the log B. So again, this bound is not polynomial for all range of degrees, but it's polynomial sometimes. I, I should say that everything I state is true over fields of large enough or zero characteristics. So I don't know how to do these things over small characteristics. OK? Uh, this result is not new. So this was recently shown by Dutch Saxena. But we get a different proof, which comes out without without any work. This uh, the proof of this was a bit surprising uh, to me personally because it's uh, it's much easier than what I would have imagined. So uh, so I'm not sure how much people had thought about uh, the question before. Uh, but I'll show you this proof. OK, uh, questions on the theorem statements?
Okay, so before I say anything about the proof, let's uh, let me say some things about this low degree condition here. Uh, okay, so uh, so a natural thing here is to wonder how serious this condition is. So so uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, most of the low bounds for low depth circuits which come from partial derivatives, shifted partial derivatives and its variants actually extend to the low degree case. Uh, uh, it's not, so those techniques uh, carry over to the, to the low degree regime. There are two results which don't carry over. One of them is uh, Rahn's formula low bounds for multilinear formulas. Uh, that strongly relies on the fact that the degree of the polynomials is very close to uh, the total number of variables. Uh, and actually, no. It, it's it doesn't even tolerate like n over a hundred, for instance. Right. Yes. So uh, good. I, I see what you mean. Uh, okay. Sure. Yeah, the, the yes. Is, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. And it's sort of for a good reason, uh, perhaps. Because Ran showed that for multilinear formulas, proving low bounds for formulas of degree, say, log n over log log n, implies general formula low bounds. So, uh, yeah, so there is something ha happening going on there which relies on the fact that the degree is large. The other result is a, is a result of uh, Ram Prasad and myself, where we prove a low bound for homogeneous depth 5 circuits over small fields. And our low bound looks is of the form 2 to the root d. So the moment d becomes log square n, the bound becomes polynomial. There are some results which, are, which only work in the low degree regime. Uh, so Ran's formula low bound result is, is one. And there's another result of Ram Prasad and myself where we show that there is, a, there is a homogeneous depth 5 circuit of linear size such that if you want to compute it by homogeneous depth 4 circuit, you need size n to the root d. So the depth reduction results are sort of sharp in a very uh, very strong sense, but we can only show these things when the degree is not too large, polylog n. Okay, so so in a nutshell, I don't know uh, how serious this is. I, I think it, getting rid of it would be nice. Uh, and uh, so, okay. Questions on the statements? Okay, good. So let's talk about the proof. Uh, So, so in a nutshell, the proofs will come from uh, two sets of results. One is the ideas developed in the course of Kaltofen's algorithm for polynomial factorization, Zev's proof, uh, Zev Amir Amir's proof, and Raphael's paper. And the other set of results are depth reduction results. Uh, and, and all of these things are based on both sets of ideas. And, and the key observation is the following lemma. Uh, let me call it lemma star. OK. so. So we have a polynomial p. Uh, we know the degrees r and variables. And we have f, which divides p degree d. And, and the lemma says that there exist polynomials G1, G2 up to say GT. Think of T as poly D. Such that F actually is of the following form. So there's a circuit B which takes as inputs the GIs and outputs your factor. The properties of B are the following. So the degree of B is at most D. And the circuit size of B is poly D. OK? So this was about B. GIs, they are similar to P in complexity. So I'll make it formal uh, in a moment. So think of GIs as 
having circuit complexity roughly what P has. So if P has a small circuit, GIs have small circuit. If P has a small load up circuit, GIs have small load up circuit. P has a small formula, GIs have small formula. And you put, uh, so you put a circuit B on top of it. This circuit has degree and size bounded by, bounded by function of D. Uh, and your factor actually looks like this. OK, questions about the statement? In the statement, there is no one of them. This is an existential statement. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. OK. Uh, so l let's uh, first use the lemma and prove most of what we have here, and then we'll go back and prove this one. Okay, so, so I should point out a few things. One, so th the most important fact that comes out of this lemma is the fact that if you are looking at a low degree factor, this module that you're putting on the top, it doesn't depend on any other parameter. It does not depend on the number of variables in the original polynomial. It does not depend on the degree of the original polynomial. It doesn't depend on the individual degree of anything. It just depends on the degree of uh, the factor that you're after. So if you are after a low degree factor, then what you're putting on top of is, is something really simple. OK, so let me start by showing you. There's something, yeah. Uh, you know. yeah. It, it could be that, uh, you know, that, you know, there exists a polynomial G1. Which yeah, which is, yes. So why, why, why is this statement not? Uh, yes, it's not trivial because of this. So I'll show you what GIs are, and GIs will be like P. So, so GIs essentially are going to be partial derivatives of P of, of some type. OK, uh, so let's first use lemma star to prove theorem 2. Do you see an easy proof? OK, so the observations are the following. So the first thing is, so I won't tell you what GIs are, but believe me for the moment that, uh, so if P has, so P has a depth delta circuit, uh, size s, then E G i has a, so implies that E G i has a depth, maybe delta plus one circuit or something, uh, and size poly in S, R, N, D, etc. So all your generators have roughly shallow circuits. You know that your B has a circuit of size poly D. It's a polynomial of degree D. So let's apply the depth reduction theorems to D. So what this tells you is that B is actually a small sum product, sum product circuit, for instance. And the size is about uh, d to the root d. So we squash the top part, plug it in, and the composition increases the depth by 4 or 5 or something like that. And, and you get the number. Is that good? Similarly. Uh, theorem 4 also follows easily. All you need is, uh, so we apply another depth reduction result. So you apply VSBR. OK, so this is a Graval winner. What VSBR says is that any circuit of size uh, S and degree D you can convert it to a formula of size s to the log d. So that's where d to the log d shows up. So this is obvious. And similarly, uh, so 
this DSS paper also shows a similar result for algebraic branching program, which also follows immediately from here. Okay, so, so let me try and prove theorem 3 from here. Important. You you apply the depth reduction to B itself. You do not touch the GIs. So observe that the the complexity bound you get is D to the root D. Getting n to the root D is easy. You apply Kaltofen's result to so you you know P has a small circuit. Kaltofen's theorem has a small circuit, which is of size poly in everything. You apply depth reduction there. You get n to the root D. So it's as as if D is a growing function. This is never a polynomial bound. But d to the root d is slightly better than that. OK. Uh, so all this feels like a bit of a cheating, because I haven't told you what gi's are. Uh, okay, good work. So let's, uh, yeah, let's carry on cheating. Uh, so, so again, so, so let me state uh, what theorem 3 really proves. So it says that if P is of the following form, such that the circuit size of Q is at most uh, S, then F is of the following form. So F can be written as maybe some over Z, 0, 1 to the M prime. Q prime of x comma z, where m prime and the circuit size of Q prime is at most poly in m and b, things like this. So, so this paper of uh, uh, DSS, they showed that m prime uh, so they showed the same result, but the bound they got here was uh, so it was poly in maybe m n d to the log d and other factors. So the gain is uh, in, in this factor. Okay. Uh, so the first uh, thing is. Right. So yes. They did not. I, no, they did not. They so what they did was they look at the lifting, uh, Hensel lifting, and in every step they calculate the complexity of Q prime. Uh, uh, right. Uh, but, uh, but, but but right. Exactly. So, uh, so. Okay. So so what Avi says uh, uh, is what I'm I was going to say. Uh, so let me first tell you that G one up to G T are actually going to be written in this form. So sum over y in 0, 1 to the m, maybe q tilde. And the circuit complexity of q tilde is at most s. So they are really, they look like p in terms of their complexity. And the second thing is this observation of valiant uh, from 79 who showed that if you take polynomials of this type and you compose them with something which has small circuit complexity, then uh, this is of this form, of the form that C 
So it's poly in all parameters. Okay, so the embarrassing thing is that even I didn't know of this result, and we ended up proving this uh, using VSBR. But yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm not sure if I'll get to say more on on this statement. So so there is a proof of this which uses uh, the VSBR depth reduction. It's self-contained, assuming you know VSBR. Uh, but I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get to this. Okay, so uh, questions so far? So what I intend to do now is to prove lemma star. Okay, so, uh, so how many people have seen uh, Hensel's lifting, for instance? Ah, okay, good. But you would have seen at some point Madhu's lecture notes. That seems to be the number one reference for all things polynomial factorization. Uh, okay, so so good. So I'll, I'll talk about this. Okay, so we are given a we are we are given a circuit. Uh, for p and we want to compute a circuit, construct a circuit for uh, a factor of p of degree d. The way we'll going, we are going to do this is that we are going to compute approximations to the factor. So what do I mean? So in the ith step, I'll have a polynomial h sub i, which agrees with f on all monomials of degree at most i. What does agree mean? Like they are the same. They are the same. So. You look at hi and look at its low degree part, degree at most i part. You are actually going to see the degree at most i part of f. And okay, so and in so the base case for this is easy. You can just start with the constant, uh, the constant term of f. And what happens is that uh, you lift these approximations. So you go from degree i to degree i plus one, and so on and so forth. Okay, so before I actually prove this, I'll only prove a special case of this. Uh, so, so let me do some pre-processing. The origin of this is, uh, is uh, Newton iteration. Moving, uh, yeah, but uh, not in the polynomial, in, but in number theory. Right. Uh, you would have coded this in, in your first coding assignment, uh, at least I did, uh, finding roots of a real polynomial, approximating roots of a real polynomial. And what you use there is basically what we'll use here. Uh, uh, Newton, Newton Raphson, Newton iteration, does it sound familiar? Yeah, I know Newton iteration, but yes. I don't uh, see how it's similar to what. Yes, we, we'll, we'll see. It's, uh, it, it is similar. And then, yeah. OK, so we'll do a little bit of pre processing. Uh, So I'm going to say that it suffices to bound the complexity of factors of this form. OK, so we had a polynomial p in n variables. Think of it as a polynomial p in uh, n minus 1 variables. And I'm going to rename a variable y. And I'm going to think of this as a univariate in uh, this ring. So it's a univariate in y, and the coefficients come from the ring of polynomials in x. Uh, so it suffices uh, to prove the lemma for factors of the form y minus x. Why does it suffice? It's not obvious. 
but there are standard ways of doing this. of generalizing this to arbitrary factors. I'm not sure if I'll get to say something about this, but uh, one good place to look this up is this uh, very, very well-written paper of Raphael. Uh, 15, I think. So he, he, uh, he goes over the argument in complete detail. It's completely self-contained. It's very nice. So we'll just. I'll just show you the lemma for factors of this type. The other thing is uh, that we'll work with factors of multiplicity one. Let me say what this means. So what this really means is that so p of x comma f is identically 0. But if you look at the first derivative of p and evaluate it at f, this is not 0. So f is a root of multiplicity 1 of p. Why does this suffice? Uh, basically for the following reason. So you could think of p as so sum over, so it's a univariate in y. You could think of this as written in this form. We know that p has, say, a small circuit. Uh, by standard interpolation arguments, we know that each of the qi's also have a small circuit. That if you are computing the sum mth derivative of p with respect to y, uh, that has a small circuit. Because you can write any derivative as uh, sort of a y linear combination of the qi's. Okay, and not only does it have a small circuit, uh, it's easy to see that this transformation also preserves other other things. Like if p was a formula, it remains a formula. If p was a low depth circuit, you don't incur a large blow up in depth in the process. So so we'll we'll be interested in factors of multiplicity one. And a third piece of preprocessing is uh, the following, is that if you look at dp over dy and evaluate it at 0, uh, then this is non-zero. So from this, we know that this is a non-zero polynomial. So there is a point where it evaluates to non-zero. And by a translation of coordinates, we can take that point to be the origin. OK, so what does it mean? So we know that uh, we know that p of x comma f is identically 0. And if you look at the derivative of p with respect to y and you evaluate it at 0, this is non zero. And from this, uh, we'll, we'll come up with a circuit for f. Which will of this, which will be of this form, and I'll tell you what GIs are in the process. Okay, so uh, one lemma to look to look at is the following. So it says that so let H be a polynomial such that if you look at homogeneous components of degree i of h, this is equal to the homogeneous components of degree i of f. Uh, then the homogeneous component of degree i plus 1 of f 
is equal to homogeneous components of degree i plus 1 of the following polynomial. So this is h minus p of x comma h over delta. Let's call this delta. So if you have an approximation of, of the root f up to degree i, then using this you can get an approximation of the root f up to degree i plus 1 and then you iterate. Okay. And once we have this lemma, the second step would be to go from lemma 1 to lemma star. So we'll look at this iteration, it, this iterative procedure from a distance, and we'll, we'll observe that it can actually be taken to be of that form if we are careful. This lemma, it works on every Good. Uh, it's true over all fields, uh, but guaranteeing those things is not true, not not clear over all fields. So for instance, in small characteristic. Uh, you sometimes run into trouble. Does your result work over all fields? Mm, I mean, the space is to be larger than the degree. degree of, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Good. So, so let me prove this. It's simple proof. So we know that p of x comma f is identically zero. This means that if you look at the homogeneous component of degree say i plus 1. I'm proving lemma 1. So this is identically 0. It means all the homogeneous components are 0. So in particular, this is 0. Uh, let's massage it a bit. So this is p of x. So th this is the homogeneous component of f of degree at most i plus 1. So it's the sum of homogeneous components of f of degree at most i plus 1. This must be 0. Why? Because if you look at this polynomial, since you are only interested in terms of monomials of degree at most i plus 1, any monomial in f which has degree larger than i plus 1 does not contribute to this. So in particular, it means that I can write some garbage here of high degree and nothing changes. Uh, so let me break it further. This is identically 0. I, I didn't do anything. So I right. So f sub i plus 1. And this means that. So now, so I'm going to write h here. So just uh, the thing to note is that this and this, these two polynomials are equal if you look at monomials of degree at most i plus 1. What is h? So h was that approximation to f. Mm. So for all monomials of degree less than, uh, less than or equal to i, h and f agree. So these terms are the same. For monomials of degree equal to i plus 1, uh, mm -hmm. these are the same. And for larger degree monomials, we don't care because we are not. OK. Okay, now I'm going to look at this polynomial. So it's x comma h plus f i plus one minus h i plus one. And I'm going to do a Taylor expansion. So think of this as a univariate in y. 
and I'm going to do a Taylor expansion around y equals h. So what it gives you is this is p of x comma h plus f i plus one minus h i plus one times times some stuff. Is that good? Now, we are only interested in monomials of degree at most i plus 1. These terms are not going to contribute to it at all. So every monomial here has degree equal to i plus 1. So these things don't contribute. The only things which contribute are here. Uh, so we'll forget this. So what happens is, so h less than equal to i plus 1 of p x comma h plus h less than equal to i plus 1 of f i plus 1. This is 0. Is that good? Yes. OK, uh, now, now we are done. So, so observe the term here. So every monomial here has degree i plus 1. And you're interested in homogeneous components of degree at most i plus 1. The only way you can get something of degree at most i plus 1 is if you pick the constant term from here. The so what's the constant term here? The constant term here is this polynomial evaluated at uh, 0. But h0 is the same as f0. Uh, so this is equal to delta. We know it's non-zero, and it's delta. So you get that. OK, uh, so so far, so good. So this Taylor expansion, sorry, I'm super naive. Yeah. The Taylor expansion trick, uh, is yeah. the, is, as an identity, does it go over other things? So OK. If, if, if yeah. I need for me to over cash to 0, right? No, no, OK. So this is a for, so I could not, I, yeah, it's formal. I could have not said Taylor expansion and gotten away right. with it. So this is completely formal. <coughs> OK. Uh, good. So, yeah, the, there's no notion of conversion. Right. right. You, you're never writing like uh, you can it. No, but you, you can't. Clearly, there is no power theory here, right? Like, you, you are talking about the power It on, but only finitely many terms are non-zero. Everything yeah. else is zero. Yeah. But, but it's like. Uh, OK, so I, right, so we'll do another Taylor expansion soon. Uh, so, so maybe I should say something. OK, so, so what does Taylor really mean uh, to me here? It just means the following. So it means this identity. So z times. OK, so, so I have fudged a little bit. So the derivatives, this is what the Taylor expansion means. So it's, it's a polynomial in z of degree at most r. And whatever coefficients you get, I'm going to call them derivatives. So that is really a, So there are some constants hanging around if you uh, remember the old things. But this is what derivatives mean. Yeah, p was a polynomial of degree r, so you, you are never going to get terms of degree larger than that. So this is this is completely formal. It's true over all fields. So then no convergence issues. All right. So so for lemma two, let's look carefully at this quantity p of x comma h. What's p of x comma h? Let me write this as p of x comma h0 plus h tilde. h0 is the constant term of h. And h tilde is everything else. 
we also know that h0 is the same as f0 by definition. So it's this. Let's apply Taylor here. So this is p of x comma f0 plus h tilde times p prime of x comma f0 plus h tilde square times p. Yes, I want to prove lemma star. So I yes, so I'm going to try and explain what GI is. Yes. So h tilde to the r times this is what this lemma gives you. The Taylor's identity gives you. Now observe. So there are two things to observe. The first thing is that when we are doing this lifting for f, we are ever going, we are never going to invoke it for i larger than d. f is a degree d polynomial, so we are always, i, I can go up to at most d. Every time we invoke this, okay, so, so we are never going to invoke this for i larger than d. Now, what do we know about H? It's, uh, it's a decision. It's, uh, yes. Yes. You know that F has degree yes. D. So we don't we don't need to invoke it for i larger than d. Yeah, you will compute. I mean, you will right. compute the the factors in terms of these eight uh, guys in terms of lemma absolute. Right. Right. Yes. You will do it somehow. Yes. yes. And another thing to observe here is that H tilde is a polynomial such that uh, the degree of every monomial here is at least one. This is how this was defined. H tilde was, so H zero was the constant part. Everything else was H tilde. So we are, so we are interested in degree at most d parts of things which look like p of x comma h. So note that the moment you go to H tilde to the d plus one, these terms stop contributing monomials of degree at most d. So if you are interested in degree at most uh, then this comes from it's less than or equal to d of p of x comma f0 plus h tilde p prime of so on to h tilde to the d of the dth derivative. Is that good? So we, we got, so think of r as being much larger than d. We got rid of a lot of information. We only, what what's present here are the first d derivatives of p with respect to y evaluated at f0. These are our gi's. Keep this. This is what's new, really, right? I mean, and yes. now people did not, uh, somehow did not look at uh, the complexity of factoring, uh, uh, so finding factors of degree and most of these as a yeah. in complexity. Yes, yes. Yes, so there is a paper of Kaltofen which looks at very special cases of this from 85. Okay, so what are my GI? So, just, just to stress it, in the Hansen listing, you could have uh, written also in this formula, uh, you know, also the H I minus Y plus 1 of P. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Right, that's exactly what happened here. Yes. Okay, is, is this good so far? Okay, so the generator's GIs are uh, defined as the ith derivative of P with respect to Y evaluated at uh, F0. So, for uh, technical reasons, I am going to actually define it as slightly differently. So. 
we look at degree at most d part of this, and we take out the constant term. But you should really think of it as that. OK, are, are, is, the, is the definition clear? So, so this, is, uh, this is natural. We are in eventually interested in computing a degree d polynomial. Why even carry over all the higher degree monomials? So this is completely natural. This is needed when we have to show that the degree of b is at most. So, so in particular, the GIs have the property that every, so they are of degree at most d, and every monomial has degree at least 1 if it's not identically zero. OK, uh, do you see now that why the lemma might be true? So, so we have the GIs now. OK, so the, the proof is by induction, basically. So if you assume that h tilde can be written in this form, so if you assume that h can be written in this form, so the degree i approximation has this form, then note that this gives you that the degree i plus 1 approximation also has the same form. So let me say this more clearly. Uh, so the hypothesis is uh, the following. So h i is of the form b i g 1 up to g t. So there's just uh, d plus 1 polynomials here. And what we want to show is that h i plus 1 is of the form b i plus 1 g 1 up to g d plus 1 with the property that, uh, so I will not say anything about the degree of bi plus 1 yet. Uh, the circuit size of bi plus 1 is at most, uh, say, O of i times, numbers, so 10 times d square times maybe i plus 1. Okay, and so at the end of it, uh, so we'll argue this, but after d iterations, you have a polynomial h sub d. I'm messing up notation. And this is of the form b sub d of g1 up to gd plus 1. And you know that you are interested in the degree d component of this. So you do one more step of interpolation, and that gives you b. Is that good? So. All we need to do is to prove this. OK, uh, it's really easy to see. So do you see it? Ah, yes, OK, good. Uh, so I'll write it again. So, OK, so, so what was here was hi plus 1 was hi minus p of x comma hi over delta. And this was equal to hi minus so this quantity was uh, p of x comma f0, so let's say 1 over delta here, plus uh, hi tilde of p of x comma p prime of x comma h f0 plus h tilde square double prime of x comma f0, and so on, up to h tilde to the d, possibly. Okay. So, 
So the induction hypothesis, you have HIs. You have a circuit which computes HIs. So it means that you have a circuit for H tilde, because H tilde is the circuit for HI minus a constant. And the way we have defined things, these are really linear forms in the, in the variables. You should think of GIs as formal variables. So these are uh, affine forms in the, in the formal variables. Uh, so, right, so you take the circuit for H tilde, you compute its higher powers, and these are formal variables, so you compute this polynomial. So how much blow up do you incur? So if you have a circuit for H tilde, you have to compute their dth powers. Uh, so you can do this. So you can compute each of the terms you are spending at most an additive blow up of d. And then this overall computation is an another additive blow up of poly d factor. So if you work it out, it's about d squared. Does it make sense? And at the end of the iteration, at the end of d iterations, you have a polynomial b sub d of g1 up to gd, gd plus 1. And you are interested in the degree d homogeneous component. So you could do interpolation. Because the total degree of the polynomial is at most poly d. This is why I wanted to restrict d. Questions? So there's nothing special in this circuit that you can use for depth reduction. So I don't know yet. Uh, I'm trying. Uh, so I tried a few things, and one of the hard things is to draw this circuit more than like two iterations and see if there's some more structure that you could just see from there. But it's possible that, OK, so, so what this gives you is a very special circuit. So there's a polynomial B, which we know has a poly D size circuit of uh, degree D. If this polynomial happened to have a depth four circuit of size polynomial in D, then we would really get, get closure for constant depth circuits. Uh, or if B has a small formula or a small branching program, a poly D size branching program, we will we, we'll get uh, closure for those classes. It's possible uh, that it uh, will be useful to compute some additional GI. Yes, uh, yeah, right, right, uh, to do a redundant lifting and, and, and somehow. In fact, uh, if you think about it, this is a redundant lifting. If you remember, uh, Hens the Hensel lemma we usually in uh, implement in numerical analysis classes, if, if you have taken one. Uh, the convergence there is quadratic, meaning your accuracy. Uh, so in this context, the meaning would be that you go from degree d appro degree i approximation to degree 2i approximation, as opposed to degree i plus 1 approximation. So we, uh, we but I don't know how to see this from there. Uh, so that's a cleverer Hensel's lemma, and it's, things are not clear. So this is a bit sloppy. Uh, maybe one could get sloppier and do better, but I, I don't know. Uh, let it's just uh, maybe one can, could clean it up to the complexity of handle lifting. So right, right. So the formula is a polynomial. Uh, right. Uh, In fact, I think the following question is already interesting. Okay, so let me. Right, so the first thing is to say if B has a, circ a formula slash ABP slash low depth circuit size poly D. Uh, so that's what Avi said. And if you think about it, so he here's a weird. Ah, uh, actually, you don't. Uh, computing these powers is a problem. So in ABP, you have to uh, patch things up one after the other. So you incur a poly blow up. So, so one question here is the following. So let's say you have a univariate polynomial in P, and and the coefficients of this polynomial are formal variables. So you have sum over i going from zero to r. Uh, x to the i times, say, z i. Now you compose p with itself. So you look at p of p of x. Uh, you look at p of p of 
vfx and so on and you look at the say d wise composition uh, so p of p d times and you evaluate you set x to alpha at this point so if you think of this as a formal polynomial in the coefficients so this is a polynomial of really large degree it's a polynomial of degree d to the d in every composition you are incurring a blow up we are interested in the homogeneous component of degree d of this uh, this composition uh, so does this have a, a small formula for instance abp uh so it's very similar to what's going on here and probably if the answer to this is yes we, we will get uh, this again by plugging in this machinery there's another question that i stumbled upon while thinking about some of these things uh so very clean questions so let me just Okay, so I did it incorrectly. Can you see the whole thing? Yes. Okay. And the third question is the following. So let's say you have a polynomial p of x comma y, which is of this form. So it's a sum over i going from some k to r, y to the i times q i of x. So I'm thinking of this as a univariate in y, but the coefficient of the, the constant term in y is 0, the coefficient of y is 0, y square is 0, and so on, up to some k. Okay, and p has a circuit of size at most s. Then does q sub k of x have a circuit size poly in s comma log k so you want to compute the coefficient of the minimum degree y monomial which is non zero and and we want to see if this there is a circuit of this size. What what's easy and to see is that there is a circuit of size poly in s comma k. Uh, what is what would what's probably not true is that so if instead of looking at q sub k, I was looking at some q sub k prime which was lying somewhere in the middle of this expansion, then such a statement is not true unless uh, permanent has poly size circuit. But the first coefficient, the first non-zero coefficient, or the first five non-zero coefficients, could very well have small circuits. This has some applications to factoring that I can tell you later. Uh, so I, I, a few years ago, I heard Pavel Frubesh uh, mention a question of this type uh, for some proof complexity things, where they were interested in circuits of not necessarily polynomially bounded degree. Uh, so I don't, I don't remember much. I'm not sure if there's a, if people believe that this might be true. But, uh, but I don't see that this is hard immediately. So I, I, I can see that the, if you want to compute q sub k prime for something in the middle, then it's hard. But what if you want to compute the first one? What is true is that uh, q sub k, q sub k can be approximated uh, to arbitrary accuracy by a circuit of size this. So what, what does it mean? So and this is easy to see is that so q sub k plus epsilon times uh, some q sub k prime uh, has a circuit size actually s so for all epsilon greater than 0 so you can really get close to q sub k but can you exactly compute it and and the context so the the uh, the context for this question is uh, 
the, this conjecture of Burgeser where he, so Carl Tofen shows that if you have a circuit of size which computes a degree r polynomial uh, size s, then all its factors have uh, circuits of size poly in s comma r. But a circuit of size s could compute a polynomial of degree 2 to the s. So this bound is really not polynomial if the degree of your initial polynomial is super polynomial in n. But perhaps it's worthwhile asking the following question. So you are given a polynomial of potentially huge degree, and you are only interested in really low degree components of it, uh, de compo uh, really low degree factors of it, factors of degree poly n. So do those factors have small circuits? And Burgeser showed that uh, you can approximate those factors in this sense, in the border complexity sense to arbitrary accuracy by uh, by circuits of size polynomial in n. But we don't know exact results of this type. Uh, this question could potentially be harder than that, uh, because this seems to give a good approach to that question. But okay, uh, that, that's all. <laughs>